Okay, hello and welcome back to the Land Rover Toolbox videos. This is the 300 TDI overhaul video series set. Right, so the last video we got a little bit of an understanding how to use micrometers and to take measurements on the journals to check for ovality and taper. I'm afraid with measurements, uh, this is something you're going to have to get used to because even when you're building the engine after things are ready, you're still going to have to do some measurements. So, anyway, I'd like to apologise for the length of time it's taken me to get this next video out, but I actually broke my uh, ankle and I'm still feeling a little bit cranky over it. Right, so anyway, back to subject in hand on this hot summer's evening. So what I've done here is put all the details that are recorded from measuring the crank on this side. There are other details, obviously, but we'll concentrate on the ovality and the taper at the moment. Right at the top there is the maximum ovality and taper that's allowed and you can see in red I've marked where there's a discrepancy or the figures are larger in certain cases so the maximum bearing journal ovality is a 0.040 of a millimeter which is allowed so we could say 0 0.04 anything that has a discrepancy larger than that is basically oval so I'll leave you to work out mathematically. You can see where the, there is discrepancy on the big end for ovality, 7.2 and 7.8. And then for taper, we have 58.72 and 58.8. Maximum journal taper end-to-end -end is 0 0.025 for information. Service limits, as I described before, we have 58.637, which is the minimum you can have before you can have this crankshaft ground. So looking at the data, 58.72, we're fine. And looking at these two bits of data, 58.72 and 58.8. So there is a difference of 0 0.08, which shows that it has excessive taper on this journal on the big end number three. Right, so if you do have discrepancies and you're unsure, reset your micrometer and then remeasure again. And this is what I did just to make sure that I hadn't made a mistake in measurements. Okay, so carrying on with measurements, we have on the second line maximum bearing journal runout, and we're also going to be looking at crankshaft end floats. You can see the details here, and this is what the video is about this evening. So looking at the workshop manual, we'll do the runout first. It's 0 0.076 uh, maximum runout that's permissible on a crankshaft. This basically will tell you if the crankshaft is bent or not. So we have our usual gang of measuring equipment and at the back there we have a dial gauge is what we shall be measuring the runout on. And I'll tell you that the measurement I've got is 0 0.04. So basically you're supposed to use V-blocks to measure the crankshaft and that's another expense which we can't afford. So what I've done is just put two shells in either end and missed out the shells on the rest of the journals. Okay, So this will give us a gap and say for instance the middle one was going to lift the crank, it won't when we're measuring it. So basically you set your dial gauge up and I would set it up with the webs uh, highest first so they don't hit the gauge as it goes round. Round. You can see how close this dial gauge is, but the stylus is touching and I'm getting a measurement from the crankshaft journal. Okay, this is the center journal, or the main center journal, and you'll see set from zero, and we'll go full revolution round, this will be a 0.04 millimeters maximum of the runout that is on this crankshaft. This is, well, it is actually quite vital because even when you buy a new crankshaft, you want to make sure that it's balanced and it's not bent. So getting back to recording our data here, we know that the crankshaft's all right now because it's 0 0.04 of a millimetre. Workshop data will tell us that it's 0 0.076. So we are well in there. That's not a problem. We don't have to worry about the crankshaft being bent. Right, so the other thing we have to look at is crankshaft end flow. Now this is more to do with the thrust washers than the crankshaft itself. 
and we're given here minimum and maximum measurement so you do need a slight bit of end flow and it has to be within tolerance the crankshaft if it moves and when you change gear it will slop like this if there's too much end flow which is not nice so basically what we have here is the two thrust washers. They do come in different sizes. However, this is the original one from the engine and they fit in on this main bearing journal down here on the block, one either side. Now the best thing to do, first of all, is to know what you have in your hand and uh, micrometer zero to uh, 25 millimeters. I've got 2.41 of a millimeter I think that is reading at okay and the other one is 2.33 of a millimeter uh, you'll see up here the measurements that I've actually 2.33 and 2.41 the maximum you can have between either is 0 0.08 if there is more of a discrepancy then you have to replace them but before doing that we need to also measure the end flow of the crankshaft in the block itself. So what I've done is I've left um, the shells in there from our earlier measurement and put the thrust bearings into place. If they keep falling out, you can always use a little bit of oil. Um, drop the crank back in gently, as not to knock the journals or chip them in any way. And then setting up a dial gauge on the end, it could be either end of the crankshaft, it doesn't matter, we're just measuring the movement um, backwards and forwards here. Now I actually had to use a screwdriver to move the crank because it didn't feel it would move by hand at all. Now basically you can see here by moving it I have um, from minus 0 0.01 to a plus 0 0.08 of a millimeter so that's 0 0.09 of a millimeter complete end float movement so recording this onto our whiteboard here that's 0 0.09 of a millimeter and I'll just swap the pens over obviously green and black and red are pretty good choices for looking at the data quickly 0.05 to 0.15 of a millimetre, so 0.09 is well in there. Yeah, the crankshaft itself is in need of regrinding. This means we'll need to put oversized shells in it, but it's not bent. We've got a lot more measuring to do. I mean, even the conrods, we have to measure to see that they're not worn on the shoulders. And this will involve using some feeler gauges and you can register that it's a pretty quick job just put the shells back in and then bolt the con rods up to the crank and you can see the measurements here uh, the maximum is 0 0.035 of a mil okay it's just a very quick measurement to do now i've taken quite a few measurements and there's a lot more to do on this engine but all the time what we're looking for is components that are out of uh, the technical data if they're too worn then they're no good at all next thing we need to do and i'll show you this in the next video is to check the bearing caps on the block and on the conrods to make sure that we have good caps because if these are distorted then i'm afraid that anything like that needs to be binned because it'll be no good in a rebuild